World Sender here in Newport in South Wales. It's the 1998 Regal Welsh, and today it is the final. Well, two players who have made it through from a field of some 64 players, and one of them is Paul Hunter, the 19-year-old from Leeds who really has surprise overcoming McManus and then overcoming Ebden to make it through to the final. His opponent, the world's number two, John Higgins. So Paul Hunter, 19 years old, ranked at number 43 in the world, and beat uh, Alan McManus in the quarters. As for John Higgins, well, world ranked number two, the 1997 German and European Open champion. And for Higgins, this is his second finals appearance in this Regal Welsh. He lost back in 1995 to Steve Davis. Well, the first frame is underway. It's Paul Hunter at the table, and he leads 40 to nil. All well, the Reds grouped at the bottom part of the table. And he's going to have to play off the cushion. Oh, and that's a foul, is it? Just a touch at the end. Well, he actually came off four cushions to make that shot. And the cue ball there resting up against the red. And now John Higgins comes from Scotland. 14th member of the Million Pound Club. Eighth player to win a million in prize money. And just safety first that time as he's played away. Got the cue ball to the top of the table. Hunter, a prodigy of former world champion Joe Johnston, who's got such high hopes for him, believes that he will be a world champion one day. He certainly has had an outstanding week down here in South Wales. Game playing a safety first shot, but the red there just staying above the pocket so this is an opportunity for Higgins can he take the opportunity we will find out when we return to Newport on ESPN welcome back then we're in the opening frame of this the 1998 Regal Welsh Open final and John Higgins with his first point one Paul Hunter Opening up with a break of 40. Now Higgins, such a craftsman at building breaks. Already up to seven and keeping the cue ball nicely placed on all those reds that are very loose at the moment down there. Nine. And putting the cue ball exactly where he wants it. For a good shot there on the black into the bottom left hand pocket Sixteen. John Higgins 22 years old 17 now ranked number two in the world so professional back in 1992 Cue ball there, just uh, cleaned off. It's only a speck of chalk and just put these players off and just stop the correct roll of the ball. No trouble with the roll of that black into the bottom right hand pocket. 24. there with three reds very potable 25 takes the one that was the nearest to us now has the pink for the center pocket John he 
Higgins already this season has won the German Open. He beat John Parrott in the final of that by nine to four. He was runner-up in the Grand Prix in Bournemouth in October. Surprisingly losing the final nine six to Dominic Dale. The moment involved in the battle for the number one world ranking with uh, Hendry, his fellow Scott. Thirty-nine. Ranked at number two in the world, but actually only won one event in the 1996-97 season. That was the European. And he beat John Parrott 9-5 in the final as he ties it all up here in this first frame. 40 points each. And this black to go ahead. Forty-seven. Although he only won one title last season, he was the runner-up in the UK Championship. And a semi-finalist in the International and the German. They're really able to rack up a lot of 48 championship points. Now two reds left on the table. A lead of eight. An opportunity to increase that lead with this shot on the black. Fifty-five to forty. Fifty-five. Now the two reds look to cut one to the bottom pocket and disturb the other, which he managed to do. 56. Now looking at a colour to bring his cue ball back up the table for the shot on the last remaining red. And backspin as he sinks the pink. And perfect position there on the red for the top pocket. Sixty-three. So only the colours left now. First one, of course, uh, will be a nominated colour to follow the red, and then he'll have to go through the sequence. Starting with the yellow, and then the brown, he's just sunk that. He gets re-potted back on the Six table. Seven. So now the yellow for the top pocket. 69. Break now of 69. Seventy-two. Now the brown for the top pocket. 76. Possible 94. 81. So a break now of 81. And now on the pink has disappeared, so just the black. Paul Hunter resigns himself to losing the first frame after making an initially good break of 40. But it's Higgins who comes back, takes the first. The NHL, the greatest hockey in the world. Catch it on ESPN. Welcome back then as we're about to start the second frame. With John Higgins taking the opening frame. 87 to 40. Young Paul Hunter had made a very good start with a break of 40. But Higgins very professional when he got to the table. This final, the best of 17 frames. And a bit of a mistake there by Paul Hunter. We wanted the cue ball to further up the table.
nice cut there from Higgins. Taking the red into the bottom right hand pocket. Seems to have been around for so long, John Higgins. He turned professional in 1992, still only 22 years old. And looking there to play a snooker. And just not hitting the Johnny cue ball firm enough. Paul Hunter, four. So four for Paul Hunter. A bit of a mistake and Paul Hunter invites him to uh, now try to get out of that snooker that uh, he was aiming to put Paul Hunter in. Plenty of reds on the table. It shouldn't be too difficult. But the shot will have to come off at least one cushion. Unless he's going to try to uh, just swerve it around. He's going to play it off that far cushion. Well, there was only one red that's been potted so there were 21 or 14 reds there remember 22 balls totally on the table when they start one but now hunter coming to the table and tying it or trying to tie it up after conceding the first frame the Rookie of the Year. And in 1996, he made the semi-final of this Regal Welsh Open where he lost 6-1 to John the Parrot. Nine. Former junior champion here in England. And still only 19 years old. Today will be his biggest ever payday. Last season, his total prize money was some £28,680. Whatever the outcome of today's match, he is guaranteed £32,000. That should, that's even if he loses. If he wins, it will be £60,000. 16. So this certainly is his biggest payday, but I think that's uh, a long way from his mind at the moment. Now the reds are all down the bottom end of the table. Tries so to go for the blue to bring the cue ball down. Twenty two. So a break now of 22. All we'll coming from that rather elementary error from uh, John Higgins where he was just trying to play a snooker on the yellow and didn't hit the cue ball hard enough. And how the momentum can change Paul Hunt, who made such a good start in the first frame, finished up losing. And now that one error from uh, Higgins has opened the door. And Paul Hunter is taking the full advantage. as well as the prize money for this final. There is also another £5,000 for the highest televised break. Now, at the moment, that stands at 142 from Graham Dot. He got that against Stephen James in a third round match, which he won 5-2. Graham Dot, though, was knocked out uh, in the next round by John Parrott. If either of these players can come up with a break of 142 or more, there's an extra £5,000 for them. 35. And this certainly looks promising at this stage for Six. Paul Hunter. Break now of 36. Now go 
goes up to 43. 43. Paul Hunter not being rushed. One of the experts felt that perhaps this appearance in the final would play on his nerves, but there's no sign of that so far as he leads. From Welcome back then, it's Paul Hunter from Leeds at the table. This is the second frame. Break now of 44. And the most delicate of cuts on the black. And no wonder he gets a good round of applause. Okay, just asking that the cue ball just be wiped clean. These players use a lot of chalk on their cues. 52. Break now are 52. He's got the blue to the center pocket. He's concerned at the moment of where he needs to put the cue ball for a shot on the next red. So he sinks the blue, brings the cue ball down the table. Still six reds left. 57. Break now of 57. Fifty-eight. Another shot on the blue. And John Higgins there just contemplating that one mistake that he made early in this frame when he was perhaps trying to get a bit too cute. Player snooker on the yellow. Sixty-three. And just didn't put any power on the cue ball at all. Misjudged it completely. Paul Hunter, world ranked number 43, his first ranking event final. 71. You realize that there are still plenty of points on the table. And now is not the time to start to relax. 72. Certainly not against the world's number two. Still three reds left. Oh, that was a very good shot in the end. Comes to lean right across the table, remembering, of course, that the players have to at least keep one foot on the floor. And they do lean across the table. And that was a very good cut as well. No sign of nerves from young Paul Hunter. And a long pot there to the top pocket. And that is a player who is playing at the moment with so much confidence. Break now of 92. 92. Ninety-three. And he's got a shot on this black. And this will bring up a break of 100 if he can sink it. And he can. One hundred. Excellent position now on the green. All the colours on their spots. 105. 109. Brings the cue ball around two of the cushions. 
for a perfect position on the blue for the centre pocket. 114. Break now of 114. 120. Break of 120, and now the final ball to black. And a break of 127. And Paul Hunter ties it all up as he takes the second frame for Tennis Magazine, only on ESPN. Welcome back then to the 1998 final of the Regal Welsh. Well, we move ahead now in frame three. Hunter is at the table. Higgins lead in the frame 63 to six. And the match is level at one frame each. Remember this final, the best of 17 frames. Higgins now back at the table. Member of the Scotland World Cup winning team with Stephen Hendry and Alan McManus in 1996. Going for this red near the top cushion. Perfect cut. Few ball has stayed out. And then drops in the opposite pocket. That's unfortunate there for John Higgins. Well, he shakes his head in disbelief. This was a magnificent shot. And it looked there as if he'd got away with it. It came off the jaw of one pocket, goes across the table. And would you believe it drops down? Well, this is the Regal Welsh. And as you can see, four of the Champions in the last four years, all now MBEs. Steve Davis and Stephen Hembry. Mark Williams One. of Wales still looking for his MBE. The winner in 1996 when he beat John Parrott in the final. Now Paul Hunter. the shot there on the blue and then just decided to check the angles of the remaining reds on the table plenty of backspin six just four reds two in the center one on the right hand cushion and one at the top cushion seven there's one that's disappeared from the center of the table. Excellent position, though, on the pink for the bottom pocket. And looking there just to try to touch that red away from the cushion. 13. Training by 40, but there's 51 still on the table, as you can see. 14. Now, just two reds. Both are on the cushion. One on the top cushion, one on the side cushion on the right-hand side. Nineteen. This is a very difficult shot. You can see that the cue ball right up against the cushion and the red very, very close to it, just a matter of, matter of centimeters. But very well executed. 20. Crowd here at the Newport Center. Very knowledgeable on their snooker. They realized how difficult that shot was and how well it was executed. And look at the backspin on the cue ball there to try to bring it into line for the one remaining red. Twenty-six. Well, it's been a very good display from Paul Hunter in this third frame. He's had some difficult shots. He's made them look very, very easy. Now the 
yellow is respotted. 25 behind, 27 on the table. He knows he can't afford a slip. Sinks the yellow. And has a very good position now on the green along the top cushion. Oh, and he's made a mistake. So an opportunity now for John Higgins. A mistake. Trying to start for you to see what your life can truly be. Welcome back then. Higgins at the table. This the third frame. Higgins lead in. 63 to 40. And looking there to bring the cue ball down the table and get a snooker on the green. He might have just done it, in fact. But Paul Hunter has been playing so well all this week for this Regal Welsh. But he's training here by 23. Oh, and that was brilliant. Only 25 points left on the table. Come out of that snooker very cleverly. Now Higgins back to the table. The world's number two. there getting the green down and now you can see 26 ahead and only 22 remaining so if Paul Hunter is to get back on the table he's going to need some snookers and Higgins is making it even harder for him but the second time in this frame that John Higgins has gone in off and you just wonder now if the door is ajar enough for Paul Hunter second time in this frame that John Higgins has seen the cue ball drop. Now it means that Paul Hunter needs to sink these four remaining balls to tie this all up and he's missed. Well, who would have believed it? It's tied up at one frame each. This is just the third frame and both players have had their opportunities Both at this stage have failed to take them. And John Higgins that time. How did we get that one down? Four. Oh, he misses there on the blue. John Still, there might be a chance for Paul Hunter. So an opportunity now on the blue. Trying to play it around the cushions. He's left it pretty safe. John Higgins comes to the table. He's fouled twice so far in this frame. You may remember he had problems in the semi-final against Mark King as well. Gave a lot of points away there. But was still able to come back and win. Now Paul Hunter trailing by 34. With only 18 left on the table. But he certainly is a fighter. He gets there, leaving it over the pocket. Now, he's quite happy with that because it means that even if Hunter knocks it in, it still means that Higgins is very much in a good position to take this frame. But Paul Hunter, a 
Dow a Yorkshireman. Certainly not uh, conceding. It's going to make the world's number two really work for this. And again, the blue just failing to drop. Trying to bring the cue ball, get it behind the pink. Just overhit it slightly now. Higgins with this long pot on the blue for the top pocket. Sinks it. Five. And he just might go for the pink this time. Perfect shot. John and John Higgins takes the third frame. He leads two frames to one, winning that third frame. Remember, the key to a good volley is your hand. Welcome back then to the Newport Centre here in Newport, South Wales. 1998 Regal Welsh Open. Players have broken in frame four. Is at the table, but Higgins leading two frames to one. But the first point of this fourth frame goes to the 19 year old from Leeds. So, Paul Hunter, who's had a marvelous week here in South Wales, beat Paul Wikes 5 3 in the first round, Neil Folds 5 2 in the second. And then a big win that made everybody sit up and take notice. Steve Davis, the six-time world champion. He beat him 5-3 in the third round. Nigel Bond, the number eight seed, was dispatched in the fourth round, 5-4. And then in the quarterfinals, the world-ranked number 10, Alan McManus. And then in the semifinal, a 6-1 victory over Peter Ebden, the world's number five player. So it's been a marvelous week for the youngster from Leeds. Now he comes up against the world's number two Nine. in John Higgins. And taking an early lead in this, the fourth frame. <coughs> 11. John Higgins just watching at the moment. Three years difference in their age, but 41 positions difference in their world rankings. Though for Paul Hunter, it's been a good uh, last season for him. He moved from 78 now up to 43 in the world rankings. Going for the yellow for the top left hand pocket. Plenty of spin on the cue ball. 14. Now, can he get to that red? Just over the center pocket on the left hand side. Might just be blocked. So, brings the cue ball down the table, has a good shot on the red there for the bottom pocket. 15. Handles the extension so well, Paul Hunter. And again, the referee just having to clean the cue ball. As you may have noticed, both players do use a lot of chalk on their cues. It certainly seems to be working at the moment for... Paul Hunter. 20. Showing no signs of nerves. This is his first major final. 21. Packed house here at the Newport Centre. 
just held here in 1992. Stephen Hendry won the final that year, beating uh, Darren Morgan, 9-3. 28. Before the 1992 season, this tournament was known as the Senator Welsh Championship, and Doug Mountjoy won it five times. But Steve Davis and Stephen Hendry have the most wins in the Open era, with two victories each in this tournament. And Stephen Hendry, rather surprisingly 36. eliminated this year, came down here to defend his crown. 37. But went out when he was knocked out by uh, Jamie Burnett. Real surprise that as he beat him in the second round, 5-4. Jamie Burnett himself went through to the quarterfinals only to lose to Peter Ebden. 44. So this has been a tournament that's had a fair share of its surprises so far. 45. And one of the pleasant surprises has been the form of this youngster. He continues to build this break in the fourth frame. Now to 51. 51. Having to spot the pink there on the spot usually reserved for the brown because the pink spot covered there by the reds. Now of 59. 59. See there, nine reds, five blacks. Monk that Six. tally. Another good position on the black. And Paul Hunter continues to impress. 67 ahead, 67 remaining on the. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Welcome back then as we continue our coverage of the 1998 Regal Welsh. We're in the fourth frame. Paul Hunter is at the table. 68. And now leads 68 to nothing in this, the fourth frame, but training two frames to one. John Higgins can only sit and watch. And John Higgins will know if he does get back to the table, he's going to need snookers. 75. Lots of them. 76. Paul Hunter just keeping that cue ball around the bottom part of the table. He continues to rack up the points with the pots on the black. 83. He's potted, you can see, the eight blacks. 84. Now a possible break of 134. It's 142 to tie Graham Dot, who's got the highest televised break so far in this tournament, which is worth a bonus of £5,000. Brings the cue ball down the table. Again, a good shot on the black. Break now of 99. 99. This red to bring up the 100. <laughs> and he made a break of 127 in the second frame. 100. And now a break of 100 in the fourth frame. 107. 109. Sinks the yellow, that brings it up to 109. Just the colours left. Not many of those now. Break of 112. Good position now on the brown. 
break of 116. And just 18 left on the table. Gonna go for the blue in the top pocket. He just doesn't fall, but he's wrapped up the fourth frame and he's wrapped up this final at two frames each. Stunning comeback there. Well, what a seesawing battle this has been. It was two frames all after the first four, and then Higgins took two, and then Hunter took two. Higgins took the ninth, Hunter took the tenth in the eleventh, and now Hunter leads by six frames to five. We join the action in frame 12. Higgins is at the table, leading 36 to 30, but down in the match, six to five. There's five reds left on the table. One a mistake. This final, remember, the best of 17 frames. We've already seen Paul Hunts are very capable of building some big breaks. A break of 51 in the last frame, frame 11. Frame uh, 4, 116. Frame 2, 127. That was brilliant. A difficult shot. And just clipping the. Uh, both jaws and drop in. Thinking of the blue, a big cut to the center pocket. Really is not too much on for him at the moment. The ball's pretty much scattered all around the table. This has been an enthralling contest for this capacity crowd here at the Newport Centre. We've seen some excellent snooker. Six. And one thing it has proved is that these players are human. We've seen errors from John Higgins in fact, throughout this uh, tournament. We saw them in the semi-finals against Mark King. We've seen them here. And Paul Hunter, who's become the sentimental favorite here with the crowd. The youngster who's really come out of nowhere to make it through to this final. We go for the extension. You look to think the brown in that top pocket. Which he manages to do. And he's got three reds on the table. 11. And for the red in the center of the table and sinks that one. Cue ball comes back to the top. able to extend his lead too far because so many times the color to follow the sinking of a red has been one of the lower colors the yellows the greens and the browns really needed to try to get some of the higher pointed balls the pink and the black but he's missed that red so two reds left on the table as john higgins Comes back, trailing by nine, and trailing by five frames to six. Well, he's 
going to attempt this, and this is a very difficult shot. The red off the cushion and across the table. It wouldn't quite fall, would it? Didn't quite get the angles right. Hasn't done too much damage, though. In fact, where the cue ball is finished up, certainly no direct shot for Paul Hunter. Able to make uh, contact though with the red. But it just comes off the cushion and now has perhaps given an opening for John Higgins. This really has been a seesaw battle. This is the first time in the game that Paul Hunter has actually been in the lead. Now the two reds are close together. Both players now very cagey. Higgins knows that he really can't afford to lose this 12 frame. Hunter realizes that this would give him a two frame lead if he can take this frame. And again, the red just does not sink. An enthralling contest here. Welcome back then. This is the 12 frame of the 1998 Regal Welsh Open. Paul Hunter at the table. The youngster leading six frames to five. And he's up against the world's number two. It's such a critical frame now for both these players. And John Higgins. Putting the cue ball behind the black. Now, Paul Hunter, quite a bit of a dilemma here. Well, he got out of it absolutely brilliantly, didn't he? Got the angle right. And hasn't really done too much damage either. He's left the red up against the bottom cushion. And the cue ball in a position where one would not expect John Higgins to be able to sink it. Higgins just playing a little bit of a game of nerves at the moment with the young 19-year-old. Plenty of points on the table, difference only of nine. But just putting on the pressure, trying to play these snookers. But young Paul Hunter is responding. And responding well. time going for the shot trying to sink one of them and has to do so <coughs> one red on the top cushion one just a couple of inches away from the bottom cushion now hunter yeah, perhaps try to play this along the top cushion and he does and it goes in It seems such a long time since we had any points added to the scoreboard. As both players were playing a little bit of cat and mouse, but now Paul Hunter, opportunity for the pink for the center pocket and bring the cue ball down the table for the one remaining red. 
which he's managed to do. That's the last red. And he's also got a good position on the black. Oh, he's overcut that. You can see there from the camera angle that the moment he hit it, it just wasn't going to reach. So now Higgins back at the table, Hunter contemplating. He wonders how much damage that will have done. 17 behind, 27 remaining before that yellow dropped. The green for the right-hand pocket, 41 to 53. Blue and the pink are on their spots. The black isn't, but the black's certainly potable. This may be the hardest shot of the four that's remaining. The brown to the top pocket. Oh, and he's missed it. John Higgins, well, the cue ball there was so close to the brown. And now Paul Hunter. And John Higgins realizes that has opened the door now for Paul Hunter in this the 12th frame Four. brings the cue ball down the table Perhaps, uh, a couple of inches too far but he could still cut the blue into the center pocket from here and perhaps take the cue ball up the table and back down again that's what he's tried to do brings it down for a position on the pink And that's the 12th frame for Paul Hunter. And he now leads seven to five. Well, can the world's number point to the ball? Welcome back then. The start of frame 13, the 1998 Regal Welsh Open final. And the outsider, Paul Hunter, leads 7-5 after 12 frames. This final, the best of 17. So can the world's number two come back? Or will Paul Hunter, world ranked at number 43, upset all the odds and win his first ever ranking tournament? Well, we know this man, John Higgins, is a fighter. But he's training here, and he's got to start winning some frames. And those are the sort of shots that will get him onto a winning way. He opens the score, and in this, the 13th frame. John Higgins today has made a few errors that we don't usually associate with him. And four marks to the youngster from Leeds, because he has taken every advantage whenever... Higgins has slipped up. Perfect weight on that shot to get the Browns to drop. You can see after he hit, or get the black to drop, I should say, but after he'd played the black, you can see there how the cue ball able to disturb some reds for him. Then another unforced error. No wonder he scratches his head. Just overcutting it. And you can see there the look of frustration. Now Paul Hunter has been able to take advantage of these little slips from uh, John Higgins. Oh. Sides this time on safety first. Puts the cue ball up against the top cushion.
Higgins there trying to bring the cue ball back to that uh, top cushion, but again, not enough legs on it. It stopped in front of the three colours. And Paul Hunter may just be able to pick off that one red that's loose. And he does so. Brings the cue ball around for a shot on the black. Angles all right that time did Paul Hunter. Straightforward shot there on the black. Eight. And there's another loose red. Right for picking. Nine. And that's what he does. Brings the cue ball up now. And has the blue to the center pocket. frame first player to nine frames will be declared the regal welsh champion 23. nine of these players have their name on the trophy john higgins was runner-up in 1995 to steve davies he was a hot favourite coming in. Paul Hunter starting the week as an 80 to 1 outsider. And now here he is leading in the final. Seven frames to five. 30. And very much in command now of this 13th frame. Playing with so much assurance. Now the blue for the centre pocket. The Reds all neatly lined up there for him if he can just keep his position. Perhaps needed a, perhaps another half an inch or an inch there to get the cue ball. For a, perhaps a better position on the black, but when you're in that sort of form, it really seems to be uh, make very little difference. Another red disappears. And the margin now between the two becomes even bigger. The black for the bottom pocket. A break now of 52. Double A conference tournament action right here on ESPN. Welcome back as Paul Hunter is starting to take a bit of a stranglehold on this final. This, the 13th frame. Uh, he is very much in control of this frame. And remember, leads seven frames to five in the best of 17 frame final. 53. Up to 53 now. As I said earlier, this is going to be his biggest payday. Even if he had lost £32,000 to the runner-up. £60,000 to the winner. And for a player who last season only earned a total of £28,680. Paul Hunter. It is now looking more and more like perhaps even a winner's check. And who would have believed that when this tournament opened a week ago? Regal Welsh, though, over the years has been a tournament that seems to have given a big help in hand to the career of young players. We remember Mark Williams getting through to the final in 1996 74. and winning, in fact, against John Parrott. Mark King last year getting through to the final, only to lose to Stephen Hendry. 
even uh, going back even further, Alan McManus <laughs> making it through to the final in 1993. And this youngster, Paul Hunter, is keeping up the tradition. Higgins there getting an opportunity to come back to the table and unable to take it. It really has been a frustrating final for John Higgins. And Paul Hunter at the moment playing with so much assurity. 74 to 8. Higgins comes back to the table. Again, it will not fall. Frame, Paul Hunter. And John Higgins concedes. So the 13th frame now for Paul Hunter. He leads eight frames to five. He needs just one more frame. The Kite FedEx Championship all season beginning March 15th on ESPN. The excitement builds around the Newport Center as this, the 14th frame, gets underway. And are we seeing history in the making? John Higgins, the world's number two, trailing now eight frames to five against the 19-year-old from Leeds, the 80-to-1 outsider, and the world's number two, who was a red-hot favorite coming into this final, finds himself behind. Paul Hunter, who has been very steady throughout this whole week, in fact, of the Regal Welsh. He was the crowd favorite coming into this as the underdog. And now every time he sinks a ball, he's getting so much applause. He's on his way now in this, the 14th frame. He can win this. He is £60,000 to the richer. His biggest ever payday. But perhaps more importantly, those points that are available for winning this, which is listed as a domestic event, so that's 4,560 points to the winner. And that will go a long way to moving him up those rankings so important for players to get into the top 16 because that way it assures them of spots in all the major tournaments both domestically and internationally and they don't have to go through the drudgery of qualifying often in some out of the way place Everything is going right now for Paul Hunter. And one, in all honesty, has I said, it hasn't been that sort of day for John Higgins. 25. The balls have not really run uh, kindly for the world's number two. Stephen Hendry, the defending champion, himself surprised in this tournament going out in the second round. Mark Williams, his first ever tournament success coming in this tournament in 1996 Steve Davis who won it twice 13. and Stephen Hendry actually won the first of the Regal Welsh Opens beating Darren Morgan 9-3 in 1992 31. that's Hunter now up to 31 Now the reds all nicely scattered. Thirty-nine. Game keeps the cue ball down this bottom end of the table. There's a good position now on the black.
46. Break now of 46. 47. One blue and five blacks out of the previous six reds. This is the seventh red that's dropped, so this gives him another opportunity on the black. Certainly if he can keep up this sort of ratio of shots on the black, he could still be in with a chance of catching uh, Graham Dot 55. for the highest uh, television break, which is 143 so far in this tournament, or 142. So he needs 143 or more. He could certainly get it. Sixty-two. He's up to sixty-two. You can see seven blacks and one blue. Sixty-three. So far, now it's up to sixty-three. You just wonder if, in these sort of situations, that somebody like Paul Hunter would be aware of that. I would expect, though that he would just be so focused at the moment, knowing that if he can take this frame, he will win the championship. And the world's number two can only sit and watch. Now he's taking the cue ball up the table. He's got a good position now on the blue. So that's the second blue that he has 76. sunk. So the maximum now he can get is 143. 77. That's if all the reds are followed by a black. And that means that he could win the 5,000 pounds bonus for the highest televised break. 84. Brings the cue ball down on the black. And he's got a red right against the bottom cushion. Oh, that's brilliant. And you can hear the reaction of this Newport crowd. The Newport centre filled to capacity. Another break of a hundred. A wry smile there from John Higgins as he watches. A hundred and one now. Gonna go for the black. A hundred and eight. going to put the extension on his cue. There is just one red left on the table. Oh, it doesn't fall. So he won't get the highest break, but he will get the championship check because John Higgins comes over to congratulate him. And the 19-year-old from Leeds wins the 1998 Regal Welsh Open here in Newport, his biggest payday ever. And the supporters and fans there stand and applaud. Some come over to congratulate him. So Paul Hunter, the Regal Welsh champion for 1998. Well, we'll continue to bring you the best of international snooker from all around the world, right here on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. A 24-hour ski event, which happens once each winter. There is no event. Thank you for watching. There is a new show called Turkish Show. Today, we will introduce you to the Turkish Show.